The Lord is good. His mercy is endure forever. I want to say to somebody based on what Lord dropped in my spirit today, expect the unusual. Expect that which is out of the blue. Elohim can never be boxed into a corner to follow protocols of men or religion. He is the creator God. He can do what he wants to do with anyone, anytime, and especially the unusual, the unexpected, just as he did with Cornelius and sent Peter to him. And Peter was set in his Jewish ways and the Lord took away protocol and filled Cornelius and his household with the Holy Spirit, knowing their hearts and water baptism came later. I think everyone who is in the law should come to that place where we stop putting Elohim in boxes and frame and talking him there, expecting he must do this step, that step, that step before he does what he has to do. Expect the unusual. Expect the unnatural. And stay in line for that which the Lord will do in your life. And I pray shall be so for everyone throughout this period. In Yeshua's name, amen. Father in heaven, Lord, here we are to receive your word for today. Give us that aspect of the teaching that appertains today. Grant us understanding. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. We continue our study in the course 101, the nine fundamental C's, and today in lesson 14, we come to C number 7, the call. We want to remind you, we've talked about conversion, talked about consecration, talked about commitment, talked about character, we've talked about, you know, charity, we've talked about communion. Now we're on the seventh C, the call. And one of the most inconvenient truths we must learn early in this course and in this lesson and in every other course about this commission is that the clearly inconvenient truth which modern day Christian religion has tried to deny is that every saint, every means every, E-V-E-R-O-Y, every saint is called into ministry, period. There's no middle ground, there's no gray area concerning this absolute fact and truth that if you are redeemed by the blood, that day you're redeemed by the blood, there's an automatic induction into his ministry to serve him and to serve humanity. And one of the key scriptures we need to remember and take to heart is John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you go and bring forth fruit that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And it's so important. It's not just the 12 disciples that he spoke to. This is a word for every Christian. The power of religion is sustained in the New Testament church when some leaders retain the Old Testament mindset concerning the priesthood. And this is the biggest problem of Christian religion is that leaders want to be in the mode of the Old Testament prophets and priests of old. So for them, men and brethren, they need to understand that Yeshua was sent to come and fulfill all the issues about the Old Covenant, including the priesthood, and to take it out of the way. Because the Old Covenant priesthood is one where a tiny professional clergy has access to Elohim often male they know Elohim they can assess him and the vast majority of believers have to be as it were grandchildren of Elohim they can't approach him they need human mediators stand between them and him men and brethren those tiny professional clergy they can hear from him know the mysteries of the kingdom and they now come as a step down transformer to tell people what they interpret what he said to mean and this is the heart of the ironic priesthood pattern that was hereditary. Often males from the lineage of Aaron having to wear special robes and colors to distinguish them. And when Yeshua came, his assignment, as we said, was to fulfill and end that ceremonial order of priesthood and instituted a new priesthood type called the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. It was prophesied of him. In Psalm 110 verse 4, the Lord has sworn, 
and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And those who asked, want to doubt this, you know what Yeshua told them that before Abraham was I am. What was he referring to? That day in Genesis 14, when Abraham met Melchizedek, the king of Salem. And of that priest, you only need to read Hebrews chapter 7 to get the picture that Melchizedek that Abraham met is the same Melchizedek that is Yeshua Hamashiach. It was a Christophany. A manifestation of Yeshua, the pre-existing Yeshua before the incarnation. And brothers and sisters, so the covenant Yeshua came to seal is an extraordinary one. It's a call for all humans of all races, all gender, all ages, all socioeconomic status, all education to become the one new man of Elohim, which is functionally speaking, his habitation by the Spirit. When you have time, read Ephesians chapter 2, 14 to 22. You know that the new covenant creates a kingdom of priests and kings is a foundational truth with no room for any shade of error. I was told in 1 Peter 2, 9, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, royal priesthood. Take note of those two words, royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people, that should show for the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of Elohim which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. That is a dearly beloved in verse 11. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshy loss, which was against the spirit soul. So he says we are strangers and pilgrims, meaning that we are going somewhere. Where we are going, men and brethren, is the physical manifestation of the kingdom when Yeshua returns, when we are going to rule with him over people, over nations, over entities, we are going to rule over them as kings, and we are going to be priests that share the principles of the kingdom to those who come into the millennial reign. Brothers and sisters, it's important we know that this is the word of the law. So in this present time, we is like a dress rehearsal for the time to come. That the way if you are saved, the law requires us to understand that we are called. We are called to exercise authority in the name of Yeshua. We are called to reconcile people to him. We are called to minister of the holy things. And this is why it's so important for us to understand the principle in Revelation chapter 1, 5 and 6, and Revelation 5, 9 and 10. So, brothers and sisters, the Lord says, we are not just saved, we are saved to be part of a holy company of priests and kings. Priests standing between him and men, praying for them, reconciling them to him. Kings who exercise authority and, in, in, and cause the, the supernatural realm, the heavenly realm, to intervene in the affairs of men. We will make decrees and cause things that be not as if they were when we exercise our faith. So it's important that we understand. That's why the Lord says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And it wasn't given to only the twelve. It's given to everyone who is a believer, that you shall be witnesses unto me. The power to be witness, a representative, who manifests his nature and character, who goes to do his assignment, both in Jerusalem and North Judea and Samaria and not the most parts of the earth. If you are a Christian, born again, you are called into the royal priesthood. It's automatic. Unless you are now in the hand of people who don't know the truth, then you begin to see yourself as a laity. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 7, and we need to know that apart from that automatic call with our new birth experience, the Lord also signifies our call by the things he puts in us that enables us to do certain things better. First Corinthians 12, 7 says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Everyone born again. There is, starting with the seal measure of Holy Spirit that came upon you when you were born again, the capacity to do certain things better than others within your sphere of influence is imparted into you. 
Ephesians 4, 7 and 8 says, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Yeshua. Wherefore he said, When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. It is important, therefore, that we understand that the Great Commission was not committed to only the twelve apostles, neither was it committed to only the one twenty that obeyed him and stayed in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. The early church was powerful because all saints were involved in preaching Yeshua and in the kingdom. In that setting, their hearts sought first the kingdom, and their signs and wonders followed them. They did not need to hold long prayer meetings and fasting meetings to get any blessing. The allocation of resources for their assignment came naturally. Remember that Stephen, the Bible says of him that he was full of the Holy Spirit, and mighty signs and wonders were done as he opened his mouth, a deacon. They didn't say, oh, only apostles are for that. And men and bread in Mark 16, we can see clearly the language of Scripture to show that all the gifts the Lord gives to his body. Verse 15, he said unto them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. They listen to this. And these signs shall follow them, not him them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and it shall, and it shall recover so that after the Lord has spoken unto them he was received up in heaven sat on the right hand of Elohim and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following. When we get it right with divine order, signs and wonders follow us. We are not supposed to be there fasting, fasting, oh Lord, please, oh Lord. No! Just get it right. What the Lord wants us to be and to do, signs and wonders will follow naturally. Because where two or three are gathered in his name, Yeshua is right there. And whatever he would have done if he was there physically, he would do through his body. That's the order. So we need to embrace the universal dimension of the priesthood. That from the day we receive Yeshua in our hearts and become converted and translated into the kingdom, a weight of responsibility comes upon every one of us. It is one which requires us to be instruments through which others will be reconciled back to our Heavenly Father. Remember Second Corinthians? Chapter 5, verse 17 to 21. You see, if any man is in Yeshua, is a new creature. All things are passed away. That's verse 17. Verse 18 says, And all things are available to him who has reconciled us to himself by Yeshua HaMashiach and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, Elohim was in Yeshua, reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespass unto him, and are recommitted unto us the word of reconciliation. So once you are born again, there is automatically a ministry of reconciling others to the Father through the preaching of Yeshua and his blood sacrifice. It is just imparted right from the day you are born again. And that's why we need to learn to accept these truths and walk in them because if they may be, though they are truth, if you refuse them, it may seem not to work for you. The mandate to love one another is a universal calling for all believers because it's what will make the church united in Yeshua. So we need to begin to see these things beyond the religious boxes. Don't tell me I'm a Baptist. No, in Baptists they don't allow women ministry. Don't tell me that. The Baptists didn't redeem you. You were redeemed by the precious blood of Yeshua Hamashiach. Don't tell me I'm Kojic. And Kojik is the only man that have opportunity. No. Kojik didn't redeem you. Don't tell me I'm Pentecostal. In Pentecostal, we only know the man of God, the overseer. Don't tell me I'm charismatic. Don't, tell, don't give me any of those labels. You are redeemed by the precious blood of Yeshua. He has high esteem of you. He called you with your salvation. It's automatic. So let's look at some critical truths we need to understand and walk in. Number one. Yeshua, our Redeemer, has already wired us spiritually for ministry with the spiritual gifts. 
This enables us to be functional parts of his own body rather than members of religious organizations called churches, in quote. So we shouldn't allow anybody, our human leaders or, 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 or churches to claim to own us. We are owned by Yeshua alone who is the head of the body. Leaders are to point us to him and challenge us to be all we ought to be in him. Men and brethren, because every saint is called, the Lord deemed it necessary to equip everyone with a measure of his divine abilities to build up others. That is the concept of spiritual gifts. And that's why Paul said to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 12, from verse 1 to 14, powerful revelation, and in verse 7, where the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And the way Holy Spirit manifests through people are different, even among couples. The way Pastor Grace teaches is the way that from I teach. Very profound way. The Lord gives her grace, gives her revelation. She communicates it that way. And some people are blessed. I, may, I, I cannot even touch them the way she touches them. And that's why the Lord said, receive one another. Celebrate one another. Don't try to control another to be fit into your mold because everyone has a particular way of manifestation. Men and brethren, it's so important that we know the Lord has ordained different gifts of the body. Romans 12, also 3 to 8, Ephesians 4, 7 to 16. All of them talk about it. That means, number two, ministry, therefore, is not, you know, anything other than this listen to this ministry is the expression of that is the bringing forth or releasing what we are impressed with what the holy spirit imparted into us when we bring it out that's ministry and every member of the body should find the appointed place and role in ministry according to the quantum of spiritual gifts that you've been invested with that's what First Peter 4, verse 10 and 11 says. If you have received the gift, bring it forth. Bring it forth. Don't be intimidated by another person's gift, you know, calling. Don't be intimidated by another person's of way of manifestation or operation or administration. There may be a peculiar one the Lord has given you grace to bring it forth. It's for the benefit of the body. So ministry is not and cannot be the clerical robes which a few people do wear or the color people wear. You know, it's not. It's not ministry. And that's why I want to encourage you go to www.kingdombusclub.com or www.gsom.ac and pick up some of the works that have been done. Part of it is priesthood and the kingdom church. The fivefold concerning spiritual gifts. These are all for you. The ministry, discover, pursue, fulfill. They are all there for you free of charge. We have no excuse. Number three, because of the above, ministry is the new covenant concept of the kingdom is receiving the realm of our spirit man. That's where Holy Spirit goes to live. The spirit man is neither male nor female. It's neither young nor old. It's neither rich nor poor. The spirit man, that is where Holy Spirit deposits the spiritual gifts. It has nothing to do with your educational pursuit. You have a PhD. You don't have a, a, a basic uh, school liver certificate. Those things don't mind. That's where you receive and so because of that, we cannot discriminate against anyone because he's female or because he's young or because he's poor from a poor background. No, we are open. No, open. We are told in 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Henceforth, we know we know man after the flesh. Yet though we have known Yeshua after the flesh, yes, henceforth, no, we know man after. Galatians 3, 26 to 29, you are all children of Elohim by faith in Yeshua. For as many of you as have put on, have been baptized into Yeshua, have put on Yeshua. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither male nor female. I mean, there is neither born nor free, nor male nor female. For you are all one in Yeshua. And if you be Yeshua's, then are you Abraham's seed. And he is according to the promise. So all saints are called. No one has a duty to take one scripture in the New Testament or two or three scriptures to now twist it to mean that somebody, because he's a woman, cannot minister, should not minister, without understanding there was a, something that Paul was pointing to. And that thing you need to understand. If you don't understand it and just take it to use to exclude people, you just be playing religion with people's grace. 
Then, um, brethren, number 14 we need to know is that denominationalism divides the body. When people get into little pockets and little pockets, they take one revelation, they pack there. A man or woman had something from Elohim three, five hundred years ago, two hundred years ago. He brings it forth, a council gathers around it. Before you know it, they gather at that mountain. They begin to run around that mountain. Some congregations, some ministries have stayed at the same mountain for three hundred years, some two hundred years, and they are almost extinct. Go to Pennsylvania, go and see the mount on the mountains and in the valleys, several Christian sects and denominations that are just dying. Of because every generation, some of their young people leave for the city and they just get on older and older. Brothers and sisters, denominations, shut people in, divide them, and divide the truth of the body. We are supposed to come to a place where we should be able to be open. Yes, this is where the Lord planted us, but we are open to truth that is consistent with the Bible, not stories of men, not tales of men, stories, no. But the truth of the Bible is that the Lord has one kingdom church, and that kingdom church, the truth of how it ought to operate is being revealed so that nobody should allow a denomination to make you to be so focused on tiny things to the point that you are not able to receive the truth. And so, men and brethren, it's, all, it's the duty of all leaders to lift up Yeshua, so that he will draw people to himself. We are told in first John 12, 32, And now if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men to myself. That's why we continually say this, the Lord showed us pastors, apostles, and prophets, and evangelists, and pastors, and teachers, stop taking your Photoshop faces and casting it into the face of men. You want to write a June message? Write a June message that the Lord gives to you and point to him, not to yourself. Because the moment you put your face, you have negated that message. It's now your message is not his message. You can't do two things with the same uh, mouth. You can't project Yeshua and project yourself. And this is a low-hanging fruit we all should be able to receive. That we exist to lift up Yeshua. Let him draw people to himself. Let him decide who he wants you to pastor. Who he wants another person to pastor. When we have this approach, there will be liberty in the spirit. There will be a massive explosion of grace. Because all believers will begin to come into that reality that everyone is called. Please will you share this video and next lesson tomorrow, I'm go we're going to get into the depth of this even in more detailed form and I pray you get it all and we continue like that. By next week, we'll have finished this awesome, simple, uncomplicated course, the nine fundamental truths. All these nine things that start with the letter C, Check up yourself and make sure that you receive it and it's working in your life because it's the Lord's doing. But your job is to receive what He wants to do in us. Share the video and let us be blessed. But by word of assignment, number one, please make the biblical case on why all saints are called to ministry. Two, share three other things you learned in this lesson today. So we're going to pray. And even if we have some open open house on what the Lord is saying in the now. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to receive from you your message for this day. Lord, we pray that everyone who has heard you will understand your word as your Holy Spirit opens eyes, plows hearts, and deposits grace into every heart. Let there be fullness of fruit, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold, and all honor and glory be ascribed to you. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday all the way to Sunday, every day. By about 10.30 a.m. UK time and that's the same at Nigerian time and you, it's either Apostle George Monday to Friday uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace 
uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.